what I'm going to work through with you is the B to D. Now, um, Jean, you, you were asking the question, you sort of said, well, how do you go on because there are two lanes? Well, if you look at the B to D, um, you're going to have to consider every potential collision point um, to do with all the traffic that could travel on any of the paths from B and any of the paths from D. Um, and there are actually um, a, a number of collision points from B to D. Now, how many collision points uh, do you think there are between B and D? Anybody want to have a stab? Two. Two. Does anybody think three? Three. Okay. Yeah. So Jean, I think, thinks two. I think that was Jean. And um, Mohammed thinks three. Uh, you win, Mohammed, because there are actually three. But that's not always obvious because what there is, there are definitely two collision points there, which are the ones that I think everyone will have found. Um, because you've got one lane colliding with D there, you've got another lane colliding with D there. But the one that often gets missed is this one. Because also what you've got to remember is that when D is lit, when it is green, the traffic can, can turn left as well. So you've got to deal with three different conflict points, which means you've got three sets of measurements. Did you find that, Kim? Did you get it? No? Okay. It's a difficult one, this. What we tend to find on the course is about half the students will get the fact that there are three and half will only get the fact that there are two. And it does actually make quite a difference when you come to the intergreens. But the thing is, it's just a question of working through this systematically when you've got all the collision points. So the first collision point I'm going to have a look at is this one. So we work on this one and we say, OK, B is losing right of way and then D is gaining right of way. So the first measurement we need to make is from the stop line to this collision point for B. Now, I get this to be 21 metres. What we then do is we subtract from that the distance from the stop line for D to the same collision point, in which case I get to be 18. Now, you can have a look at your own measurements for this. There'll be something similar. You shouldn't be getting anything radically different. And that will give me uh, an X distance of three metres. So I write that one down. I'll make a note of that particular calculation. What we'll do now is we'll have a look at this collision point. Now, this collision point, now, we measure the distance because B is losing right of way from B's stop line to the collision point for, uh, for this one. And I got 23 metres. And from that, I subtract the distance from D's stop line to that collision point, which I got 14 metres. Now, that now gives me a potential X distance of 9. But here's the big one. When we look at this one, we now measure the distance from B stop line to this collision point. Now I got 41 meters. And then from that, we subtract the distance from this stop line, which is also controlled by D, to the same collision point, And I get 22 meters. Now that gives me a whopping 19 meters uh, path difference or X distance. So you can see if you'd have missed that one, by any chance, you'd have finished up with an X distance that was too short. Now, of the three X distances, three meters, nine meters, or 19 meters, which one do we use for working out the integrine? 